Alrighty gang, so we're going to do some reactions. I'm going to do two examples of reactions we've done before from OCHEM 1, see how they kind of change the array of products that we would normally expect, and then before we even do that, I want to kind of talk a little bit about different charge stability, and then I kind of want to leave you with a strategy at the end to how to handle conjugated systems. Okay, so before we get into the reaction aspect of the video, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a question that we will talk about together. Okay, so if someone were to give you these two carbocations, or they could be radicals, or they could be negative charges, it doesn't matter, and said, okay, I want you to tell me which charge is more stable. So, based on what we've done in the last worksheet, I hope there's a little light bulb going off in your head. So let's just talk about both. This is a secondary carbocation, right? Just, just a secondary carbocation, nothing special. We know that you know, there's some hyperconjugation going on around here. We know that there's some type of stabilizing effect to you know, keeping him a little happy. However, I hope you've looked at this structure over here and you're just kind of kicking him to the curb and saying, well, big whoop. Not only is this guy a secondary carbocation, but he's secondary as well as allylic, right? And we know that allylic charges are stabilized through resonance based on the resonance you drew in the last worksheet. So we could draw our double-headed arrows. I could swing this bond over here and draw a resonance structure looking like this. And you can see because there's two resonance forms that's helping to distribute this positive charge over not just this one atom, but multiple atoms, that easily this structure is more stable than just this bland old secondary carbocation. Okay, just wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Just make sure that if anyone ever asks you to rank stability of charges, that if you have some type of tie with degree as far as tertiary, secondary, primary, if anything's allylic, automatically wins out. Okay, so now let's do some reactions with systems that are conjugated. All right, so I hope this reaction rings a bell from OCHEM 1, but if not, you don't have to remember too much, but it would definitely help. Okay, so let's kind of look at the, con or the, the Markovnikov addition of water. So, if you can remember, Markovnikov, Markovnikov additions work by this nucleophilic double bond, this double bond with a lot of negative charge built up in it. It's going to want to grab H+, right? It's going to want to grab and get protonated. It wants to grab some acid. So, let's figure out, right, mechanistically, what we would do first. Okay, so there's hydronium. Now, which double bond do we protonate? And I'm going to tell you this double bond. And here's my reasoning, right? We're going to grab H+, and this electron pair goes on to the oxygen. And hopefully you guys are thinking to yourselves, oh, that makes sense. So if we grab him, right, we didn't touch this double bond at all, do I put the positive charge on this carbon or this carbon? And I hope you guys are thinking it's this carbon, right? And the reason being, if we put the positive charge over here, we just have a regular plain old primary carbocation and we know that's not good. However, not only do we have a second carbocation over here, but he's allylic, right? He's right next door to this double bond, which allows us to draw some resonance, which is kind of the key here, right? So let me just kind of erase all of this. Actually, I'll just redraw. This, this will be the carbocation we generate, right? So he's right here, double bond right there. So here's kind of the, the point of all of this. We're going to get more than one product here, and here's why. <coughs> so at normally, in this reaction, right, we just have water come back, and water would attack at this position. If we cleaned him up, we would end up with this alcohol product, right, right there. However, what if I drew some resonance? What if I moved this double bond right over here, right? And if I drew the other resonance form down here, he, the resultant resonance structure would look like this. And what's stopping from water attacking this resonance hybrid, right? This resonance form. And I'm telling you that nothing stops it, right? It totally 100% happens. So you can see that, so the double bond would be right here. You can see that with conjugated systems, if we ever have a mechanism that involves a negative charge or a positive charge or a radical, if you, have a, if you ever have some type of intermediate, 
and it forms a charge and you can make it allylic, that is the charge that will form. And not only that, but there will be some resonance that occurs that will help you kind of have this distribution of more than one product, right? Like I'm telling you that you will get this alcohol product and you will also have this alcohol product. And I guarantee you will be asked some form of question like this on whatever exam you take that covers conjugation. Okay, so let me kind of erase all of this. I want to show you one more example and then I want to leave you guys with a, a little strategy regarding conjugated systems. So in the problem before, we looked at how you could predict the product of some type of mechanism involving an allylic charge in a conjugated system and seeing the types of products you could predict, the array of products you could predict. So the other type of problem I feel like there is with conjugated systems doing a reaction that involves like a, a charge and a mechanism is someone might say, okay, if you added chlorine across the bond and, you know, we expect, we see that we, you know, have these products produced, explain it. Show us how this happens, right? So then here's kind of the strategy. We need to start our mechanism the way we know, and then eventually we're going to run into a charge. And once we run into that charge, we draw some resonance, and then hopefully that resonance will help us explain how these products occurred. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a little background on this reaction because I know this is from OCHEM 1. You wouldn't have to do this on an exam, but I just want to make sure we're coming from the same place. So whenever we add Cl2 to a double bond, just like we would add Br2, the mechanism kind of starts out just where this bond would split heterolytically, right? And, and what I mean by that, heterolytically, one atom is going to get all the electrons, the other one will get none. So if we did something like this, we would produce Cl minus plus Cl plus. All right, that's not terribly important, but now we're going to get to the part that would actually explain this reaction phenomenon right here. So let's take the structure we're starting with, right? This diene, this structure with two bonds, two double bonds, sorry. So remember, these double bonds have a lot of negative charge built up in them. They are very nucleophilic. So nucleophilic things, like positive atoms, right? Just like this chlorine with losing, uh, missing out on one electron. So uh, we can pick up any double bond, but I'm just going to grab this chlorine with this double bond right here. Okay. So again, just like kind of doing that Markovnikov addition of water where we protonated the double bond, someone has to make a bond of this chlorine. So who misses out? Who gets the positive charge, right? we kind of get to choose whether we put a positive charge on this atom or this atom. And hopefully you have another one of those light bulb scenarios go off where you think, okay, I can either make this bland secondary carbocation or we can make this dope secondary carbocation that's also allylic. Clearly we're going with the dope allylic one, right? So chlorine gets added here and now we have a positive charge right there. All right, now this is the part. Bang, bing, bing, bing. We're gonna draw some resonance, right? So, I'm going to draw a double-headed arrow, I'm going to move the double bond over here, and let's draw the result of that electron flow. Double bond is moved right down here, and now the carbocation shifts there. Okay, hopefully this is giving us some insight as to, what, as to how this occurred, right? Because our nucleophile is the Cl- we produced above. He's just waiting to attack. But you can see both the resonance forms kind of illustrates how both these products are made. Because over here, we would attack at that position. That would give us the chlorines next, next door to each other and the double bond in the position that it is. However, in the other scenario, we attack this carbocation. And you can see we have the chlorine spaced out one, two, three, four positions away. One, two, three, four positions away. And the double bond is exactly where we'd expect it. So really guys, this is nothing new for you. You've always known how to draw resonance. You've always known how to use reaction mechanisms to explain things that you've observed on exams and all that types of things. But there's just a little twist. You just have to draw the reaction mechanism, draw some resonance, and then just say, this explains what is observed.